Thanks for watching County Report This Week. I'm Susan Kennedy. Residents here in Montgomery County have been paying a five cent bag fee at stores since last year, but one county council committee is looking at changing the law. The council's Transportation and Environment Committee is considering restricting the tax to grocery stores or banning plastic bags altogether. Customers would still have to pay a nickel for a paper bag under that proposal. Councilmember Nancy Florine told us where this discussion stands. At this point, given the fact that I think even some of my colleagues are starting to agree that we shouldn't be asking people who are buying underwear at Macy's to have to bring their own bag or sheets and towels and things of that nature. Uh, we're looking at some adjustments to the tax that we could, would focus it where people are pretty used to paying it now, which is at the, at the grocery store where you're going to buy a lot of food. People have, have acquired a goodly number of food-related bags, uh, and we think maybe we can draw a distinction there and maybe we can eliminate the, the bag tax at least for uh, uh, purchases that are not food related. So that's what we're thinking about right now. We should have a draft bill out uh, and there'll be conversation about it later this spring. Montgomery County is a great place to live for all ages. That's what representatives from MetLife and Generations United say. And Montgomery County was recognized for that designation at an award ceremony in Washington, D.C. Honoring the recipients of the 2013 Generations United MetLife Foundation, America's Best Intergenerational Communities Award. Yeah, it, it recognizes decades of work in the county to build a great quality of life for young people and seniors. There's a lot of nonprofits that the county supports that directly bring seniors into classrooms to do tutoring and language skills. In our planning, we try to prioritize walkable development so that seniors and young people can live independently lifestyles. There's so many ways in which we want Montgomery County to be a community for a lifetime and, and that's what this award is all about. Montgomery was one of four communities selected for the award. Chosen for recognizing the value of promoting strong bonds between generations, the county has been a trailblazer in advocating for seniors and intergenerational programs. Thirty years ago, an intergenerational committee was formed to plan for a system where young and old could live together. We started a long time ago. In fact, I guess we're the second oldest center in the country. Uh, and it's very nice to be recognized nationally. But the real satisfaction comes from the dailiness of seeing young people benefit from older contact with older people and the, and the reverse. And it's just a joy to see the projects that we do. Thanks for busting me out as a granddad. Appreciate that. Author and journalist Juan Williams presented the awards. And Congressman Chris Van Hollen was among the representatives for the county. He said Montgomery has excelled in providing intergenerational programs and practices. I'm really pleased that Montgomery County, uh, the county that I have the great privilege of representing, has really been so far ahead of the game. Montgomery County has been one of the pioneers uh, behind the idea of what we call intergenerational uh, support, cooperation, the idea that we have these two great resources. Uh, we've got our young kids uh, who are our future, uh, but we also have lots of experienced uh, people uh, who are getting older uh, and have a whole lot to contribute uh, to our community and to our kids. We have a program where we take young people into senior facilities. It's, it's bringing the community into the senior facility and the, and the smiles on the faces of people when they see, you know, elementary school kids come and, and have activities together is, is, is joyous. As the Maryland General Assembly begins to wind down its 90-day session, the transportation funding bill has gained momentum. The House approved the measure, which would raise the gas tax by as much as 20 cents by the year 2016. The revenue would be used to replenish the state's dwindling transportation fund to pay for many long-awaited projects, including the Purple Line. We have tremendous uh, infrastructure needs across the state of Maryland. Montgomery County is not alone. And I, I, we're just so delighted that our lawmakers have, have taken this up and are making real progress on it. There are always going to be issues with who pays for what, but at the end of the day, I think everybody driving around can agree uh, we really need to put uh, more emphasis into improving our transportation system. Uh, Montgomery County's list of transportation projects is billions of dollars long.
We know we're not going to be able to do everything, but this will be a huge start. Montgomery County students got a glimpse at real world business opportunities recently in Shady Grove. MCPS TV has the story. More than 800 career minded high school students had a chance to mingle with business executives and education leaders at the 12th annual Young Professionals Conference. This event, held at the universities at Shady Grove, gave high school students a chance to learn from experts in a wide array of industries, including finance, engineering, education, media, and many more. The keynote speaker was Seth Goldman from Honest Tea Company, who inspired students to be creative and think outside the box. You see, I've titled my remarks, Bending the Rules, and I want to make sure I'm not on the record telling you to bend all of the rules. The event was organized by the Montgomery County Business Roundtable for Education in cooperation with MCPS, Montgomery College, and the universities at Shady Grove. And what we're trying to do is just broaden the possibilities of what they can think about doing as their career. During the event, students attended panel discussions around their particular areas of interest. They had the chance to get advice and ask questions from industry right. professionals. So now with Personally, I've always had the entrepreneurial dream to start my own business, as many people have, but as fun as that would be, there are more realistic career paths. And accounting, it, it looks like a great one. I think this conference is so important because it allows you to see other people working in the career and gives you a chance to know if this is truly what you want to do or if you should find a different career path. Even if this isn't what you want to do, it, can, it gives you the opportunity to decide and to make that decision. The Young Professionals Conference helps students see the connection between what they're learning in the classroom and success in the workplace. One of the things that we, we really enjoy about, the, about presenting here is the opportunity to reinforce to the kids that what they're learning in school, the particular topic, may not be the essence of what their, uh, of, of their future, but the ability to learn, the ability to collaborate, and the ability to work in teams and partner, um, that is going to be critical to their future success. What a great experience and a great way to get a jump on networking. This conference is held annually. Contact Montgomery County Business Roundtable for Education for information on next year's conference. Still to come on County Report this week, good news concerning green jobs here in Montgomery County. And some residents get some food for thought at a local literary series when County Report this week continues. Did you know there are more than 10,000 county government phone numbers? But there's only one number you need to remember for non-emergency calls, 311. MC311 is Montgomery County Government's online telephone information system. Need information? Have a problem or complaint? Trying to locate a county government facility? Call 311. The call center is open Monday through Friday, 7 a.m. to 7 p.m. The website is available 24 hours a day, 7 days a week. Are you sure they can recycle us, Clamshell? Hey, Dome, we're on a new recycling postcard. I can't wait to make a new start. Maybe I'll be a red carpet at a big premiere. And I'll get to paint the White House. Shh, here he comes. <laughs> now you can recycle more plastics in Montgomery County, including number one PET plastics, such as clamshells, deli containers, trays, lids, domes, and cups. Woohoo! We're in! For more information on recycling, contact the Montgomery County, Maryland Division of Solid Waste Services at 311. The wait is over. Recycle more plastics today. To get information or report an emergency in Montgomery County, do you know the right numbers to call? Montgomery County 311. I need a new recycling bin. Call 311 for county information and services. Montgomery County Police. My car was broken into last night. Call 301 279 8000 for crime related non emergencies. Montgomery County 911. I just saw a car crash. That's an emergency. Help us get help to you. Call 911 only for a real emergency. Welcome back. We've been focusing a lot in recent weeks on pedestrian safety, but police are still reporting an increase in incidents. Captain Paul Starks from Montgomery County Police is here to remind us again to be safe. Captain? Today I'd like to talk about pedestrian safety. There's a lot of talk about how distracted drivers are, but oftentimes when we're trying to cross the street, we're not fully engaged. We're asking you to stop talking on your cell phone, take the earbuds out of your ears, make sure you're crossing at a safe intersection where there's a traffic light and a crosswalk. 
in the hours of darkness, make sure that you can be seen. Don't take a chance. Make sure cars are stopping and slowing down before you cross that street. When you're looking both ways and keeping your head up and continue to be engaged as you cross the street, you are a safe pedestrian, and that's what we need in Montgomery County. Thank you. Great information again. Thanks a lot, Captain Paul Starks, Montgomery County Police. Recently, the Montgomery County Chamber of Commerce honored county public safety personnel at the 39th Annual Public Safety Valor Awards Luncheon. Over 1,300 people gathered to recognize 27 members of the Police and Fire Rescue Service for heroic acts and community service. Medals of Valor were given for such things as protecting other police officers being shot at in Silver Spring, and EMT risking her own life to save a man pinned under a metro train, and for saving a driver from a burning vehicle. How do you spend your lunch hour? Well, if you like to read and want to meet some well-known authors, there's a local lecture series you should know about. My MC Media's Sonia Burke has the story. Sonia? Throughout the year, the Friends of the Library host a series of literary luncheons right here at the beautiful Strathmore Mansion. I've always loved swamps. Um, I don't know, a swamp to me is kind of like a great woman. There's an there, there's, there's a air of danger and exoticism and fertility to the whole thing that I, I find inescapable. And with that opening line, so writer Bob yourself. Deans introduces his this Montgomery story. County audience to his book, The River Where America Began, A Journey Along the James. First thing I found out was that there were Native Americans living alongside this river 13,000 years before the birth of Christ. How do we know? Some of these audience members traveled from Virginia to Montgomery County just for this event. It's just exciting to meet the author and see what research and how long it took him and just to know that little bit of background. Just You just kind of feel closer to the book. I thought it was fascinating. I can hardly wait to read the book. This popular literary luncheon series is now in its 25th year. We've had a long list of notable authors for our literary luncheon series, including today Bob Deans. We've had Cokie and Steve Roberts. We've had Haywood Johnson, Kathleen Kennedy Townsend, and we will be having Martha Grimes, a leading lady in mystery, on April 18th. I love the literary luncheons because I always learn something. A Bethesda resident, Author Bob Dean said he enjoys the opportunity to talk with local readers about the James River. It's nice for me to be able to connect with people who are connected not only to the James River, but all the waterways around here, the Chesapeake Bay, and the waterways that really knitted our country together from its beginnings. Attendees were also able to ask the author about some of his other books. He's published four. And to talk to him about the art of writing and researching his stories. For more information, visit the Friends of the Library website. In North Bethesda, for County Report This Week, I'm Sonia Burke reporting. The state of Maryland is doing a good job of creating green jobs. That, according to a report released by the Bureau of Labor Statistics, as it stands now, green jobs make up close to 4% of the employment sector. Waste management, treatment, and conservation are the state's largest green sectors, and the fastest growing segment, Solar energy, which has had a job growth of nearly 64 percent from 2003 to 2010. When County Report This Week continues, April is Earth Month in Montgomery County, and county residents are gearing up for a slate of events. I'm Rockville 11's Bridget Breuer. Coming up next, we'll have a preview of the biggest party of the year in Rockville when County Report This Week continues. If it wasn't for his doctor, he wouldn't be here. If it weren't for Montgomery County Fire and Rescue, he wouldn't be here. If it wasn't for the phone call, we wouldn't have been there. If I didn't call, I don't know where we would be. Montgomery County emergency responders are there when you need help at no cost to you. In an emergency, don't ever hesitate to call 911. If you live in Montgomery County, you will never get a bill or pay a dime. So if you have an emergency, call us. We're, We're there, there for you. you.
Welcome back. Every Memorial Day weekend, the city of Rockville is transformed into a downtown music festival during hometown holidays. This year marks an impressive milestone, and our Rockville 11's Bridget Breuer has more on this year's event. Bridget? That's right, this year's hometown holidays is slated to be better than ever, taking over downtown Rockville over Memorial Day weekend. Here's what to expect from the best party this side of the Bay Bridge. Give all that to the give and treat. I'm gonna wash my pain down to the sea. I said, now nah, I'm gonna give it all for Rockville and be at the hometown holidays. Come on. This is just one of the artists performing at the City of Rockville's Hometown Holidays. We had the chance to meet some of the acts as part of a show produced by Rockville 11 called Hometown Holidays All Access. This year, it's all about the music, with more than 30 live performances scheduled during Memorial Day weekend in downtown Rockville. The free, family-friendly event is celebrating its 25th anniversary, and the city's Special Operations Supervisor Mike Coppersmith is looking forward to this year's lineup. It's a lot of fun. Um, you know, it's you people. It's it's for Rockville, but it's also you know people come down from Virginia. They come down from Frederick and Olney, and it's really you know it's a, it's a regional event, and it gives people uh, a chance to see what Rockville is all about. There's a lot of great music, um, and it's free. So you come down, you know, you sit in a tent, you watch music, and you bounce all around, and you get to see a lot of a lot of great entertainment. You know, for the price of free admission. Be sure to catch the full production of HTH All Access on Rockville 11 and online, and we'll see you at Hometown Holidays this Memorial Day weekend. At a recent event, the Peace and Justice Community at Montgomery College sought to raise the awareness about drones, and in the audience was an MC student with a compelling reason to learn as much as he could. Danielle Stesky has the story. Mohamed Darin is a sophomore student majoring in general studies. He attended the lecture organized by the Peace and Justice Studies Community on Drones, which touched upon international law and on human rights. There's also a whole body of human rights law, and the Universal Declaration of Human Rights is one of the more important documents in the legal background of human rights. Ali McCracken works for Code Pink, a woman initiative grassroots organization that works to end U.S. funded wars and occupation to redirect resources into life affirming activities. She has visited drone strike survivors in very close tribal areas of Pakistan. What I'm here to really talk about mostly is the killer drones. Uh, which are done by Predator and Reaper drones, predominantly made by a company called General Atomics based in Southern California. Mohammed is American and his relatives live in a tribal village in Pakistan. Every two or three years, he visits them. He knows up close about how Pakistanis feel about Americans. I've been there plenty of times and I know about the fear in, of, the, of the local people. I guess you could say despise or, or hatred of Americans. I mean, I was an American in their eyes. When asked about the drones, Mohammed says that's a complicated situation. I think the drones actually encourage hatredism of America, which is pretty sad. We don't need to go outside of Maryland to spot a drone. There's a, uh, a drone training facility that was just opened near the Patuxent Naval Air Station. Uh, which is uh, in, in northern St. Mary's County, and a few miles from there is an annex called Webster Field, and they actually do training, of, uh, training and uh, testing of drones at, at that site. As Mark Miller explains, it's important for students to be informed, involved, and engaged in their community, whether or not they are American citizens. Some students are interested in diplomatic careers, for example. It would be nice to think that students like that would have a chance to hear a little bit about peace and its connection to human rights. Even though Mohammed says he is a little afraid of going to Pakistan, he is still planning to visit his relatives this summer. For County Report This Week, in Rockville, I'm Danielle Stesky. Earth Day is coming up, and here in Montgomery County, we celebrate it all month long with many volunteer opportunities. Each spring, Rock Creek Conservancy organizes and promotes the Rock Creek Extreme Cleanup with trash cleanups at over 50 locations along the 33-mile length of Rock Creek. On Saturday, April 6, you can join hundreds of volunteers to pick up tons of debris for the fifth annual Rock Creek Extreme Cleanup from 9 a.m. to 12 p.m.
We've seen dramatic changes in the, in the amount of litter. The first year we pulled out 29 tons of junk, basically tires and refrigerators, car parts and that kind of thing. And that the amount of junk we pull out each year has dropped a lot because the park is cleaner. We've gotten out a lot of what we call the vintage trash that had been there for years and years and years. That's now gone. And what we see now is the trash that just comes in each year, whether it's litter or people you know, kind of illegally dumping in, in the park. The Rock Creek Extreme Cleanup is part of the Alice Ferguson Foundation's Potomac River Watershed Cleanup that takes place across four states and the District of Columbia. The largest regional event of its kind, the cleanup provides a transforming experience that engages citizens and community leaders and generates momentum for change. We could not do this cleanup, which is the largest regional litter cleanup of its kind, without our many, many partners. And we're delighted to have a huge array of them, from uh, local Girl Scout and Boy Scout troops to organizations like the Rock Creek Conservancy, who come out year after year and have embraced a particular piece of the Potomac as their own and really feel a kinship with making sure that that portion of the watershed is clean. And so we really encourage that and are so grateful to our partners um, who are from jurisdictions like Montgomery County, um, Arlington County, Prince George's. Uh, so local government really has embraced and, and taken this on in addition to the private sector partners, nonprofit organizations, and as I said, just right, you know, right down to Boy Scout and Girl Scout troops who come out every year and, and really make a difference in this cleanup. If you would like more information about these cleanup events, go to fergusonfoundation.org. To find out what other events are happening in April, go to mygreenmontgomery.org. And more on pedestrian safety. In this week's transportation update, Tom Pogue tells us about a pedestrian safety campaign that's being led by some county high school students. Hi, I'm Tom Pogue, Community Relations Manager for the Department of Transportation. Here's an update for Montgomery County. To improve pedestrian safety in areas with the highest densities of collisions, MCDOT and a group of Blair High School students developed an education campaign for the Four Corners area of Silver Spring. Those under 20 years of age and those over 50 have been involved in the most collisions at Four Corners. Transportation Director Art Holmes and Montgomery Blair High School Principal Renee Johnson presented student Colin Morris with an iPad as the grand prize winner of a text message contest. Morris was chosen in a random drawing out of more than 1,300 student entries. In addition, 12 students received gift certificates to the Chipotle restaurant chain for correctly answering pedestrian safety related questions. Participating students received rubber wristbands featuring pedestrian safety messages. Another contest at the high school chose two winners whose eyes are featured on posters that urge pedestrians to establish eye contact with drivers and look both ways before crossing the street. For more information, visit our website at montgomerycountymd.gov walk. We're working to keep you moving safely. Coming up, it does look like spring is trying to make an appearance and that means it's time to get outside. We'll have some tips for a fun outing right after this short break. Stay with us. Montgomery College's workforce development and continuing education program will join with the Kauffman Foundation to offer a new series of fast track entrepreneurship and business growth training programs. The 30 hour classes are designed to help small businesses and will begin in the fall of 2013. MC will honor the Suzanne and David Hillman Family Foundation on April 4th at the Germantown campus. The foundation's $600,000 gift to the college created the Hillman Entrepreneurs Program at Montgomery College for students who have an interest in starting a business or leading a company. If you're interested in a career in the arts or a medical field, then plan to attend one of the information open houses scheduled on MC's Tacoma Park Silver Spring Campus. The Arts Open House is April 3rd at 3 p.m. and the Medical and Health Programs Open House is set for April 23rd at 4 p.m. Welcome back to County Report this week. Well, spring is finally here, so it's time to put on your hiking shoes and check out one of this county's beautiful trails. Here with some helpful tips is Seneca State Park Ranger Kristen Gregory. 
My name is Ranger Gregory. I work for the Maryland Park Service at Seneca Creek State Park and today we're going to talk about trail safety. We recommend that you always hike with a partner. However, whether you choose to hike alone or with a partner, it's critically important that you always let someone who's not in your hiking party know where you're going and when you hope to return. Bodies of water such as Clapper Lake make for excellent hiking destinations. However, it's not safe to swim in these lakes or to go out on the ice in the winter time. Most of us carry a cell phone anyway. In case you get lost or injured, you can call emergency services from your cell phone. The cell phone is also capable of providing GPS coordinates. It's critically important that you stay where you read the coordinates from so that when they find those coordinates, you're there waiting for them. Let's talk a little bit about what to wear when you're hiking. Layers are very important for your hiking attire. I'm wearing three today, but synthetics are far more capable of keeping you warm and cool than cotton is. When leaving your car at any state park or trailhead, don't ever leave valuables visible in the car. Try not to bring them at all, but if you need to bring them, make sure that you hide them under a jacket or lock them in the trunk preferably. When I go running, I have a single key that I carry. I tie it to a sweatshirt hood or to a hairband, and then I don't have the keys jingling, but at the same time, the public can't access my car or my valuables. Dogs are welcome in Maryland State Parks in most cases. However, they need to be leashed at all times. This is for the pet safety as well as for the safety of the public. One of many reasons that we encourage you to stay on the trail is because of poison ivy. The trails are generally clear of poison ivy. Another hazard you may encounter while you're hiking is ticks. They are less on the trail, but not completely unavoidable. Some things that you can do to eliminate your contact with ticks is to wear light clothing. They're more easily spotted on light clothing. It looks a little nerdy, but you can also tuck your pants into your socks. So what are the benefits of trails and trail use? There's wildlife to be seen. There's friends to be made. There's fitness to be had. And it's overall a great thing for your outlook on life. So come join us soon on one of many trails in Montgomery County. Kathy Stanhope is here now with another lovable Pet of the Week. Hi, this is Kathy Stanhope with your Pet of the Week at the Montgomery County Humane Society. And this handsome devil is Max Mara. He is about three years old. He will be neutered upon adoption. And if you are looking for a big, handsome cat, this is the cat for you. He is a handful, but he likes to be held. He likes to play. He likes to cuddle. And he, like I said, he is a big, big cat. In fact, truth be told, he might want to lose a pound or two. So you might not want to overfeed him at first. But he's a great guy. He has been at the shelter for quite a while, and he is looking for a home. And please come on down and see him. If you're ever looking for a reason to volunteer, consider the Montgomery County Humane Society. Here at the animal shelter, we need people to hold cats. The cats are in the cage 24 hours a day. We need people to get a little bit of training, and then you come, you get the cat out of the cage, and you just sit there and you pet the cat. It's good for you, it's good for your blood pressure, and it's really good for the cat. We also need people to walk dogs. Again, a little bit of training, and then you can come on down anytime, take the dogs out for a little bit of a walk. We have a fenced in backyard. They can play ball. There's an area where you can take them off the leash and let them run and chase the ball that you throw for them. We need volunteers, and it's lots of fun, and the animals really, really appreciate it. So give us a call at 240-773-5967, or visit us on the web for more information at mchumane.org. Check out all our animals, including Maximira here, and you might want to take him home as your new best friend. Well, that does it for this edition of County Report this week. But remember, we do want to hear from you. Share your ideas on the county's new social media site, engage.montgomerycountymd.gov, and you can also like us on Facebook. For County Cable Montgomery, I'm Susan Kennedy. Have a great week.